The horse's reflection. In a picturesque valley nestled between rolling hills and verdant forests, a herd of horses lived peacefully. <laughs> Amongst them was a youngster named Spark, who always felt different from the others. Spark had a peculiar bump on his forehead and unusual shimmering markings that set him apart. His difference was not just skin deep, he could make flowers bloom with a mere touch and understood the chirping of birds as if they were speaking to him. You'd think this would make him pretty special, but unfortunately, the opposite was true. The horses often teased Spark for his oddities, making him feel alone. Grizzlehoof, the head honcho horse, was the worst. What kind of an horse are you with your lumpy head? You haven't even got a proper mane! <laughs> it's, all, it's all sparkly! Spark didn't know why he was different. You see, you might already have an idea why he's different, but that's probably because you know about certain magical creatures with certain pointy things on their bonces. One warm spring morning, as Spark wandered away from the herd to avoid the teasing, he found himself near the edge of the forest that bordered the valley. He'd never gone as far before and was just about to turn back when he heard a neigh and a call. Spark! Sp Spark, is it really you? Um, who are you? My name is Tabitha, of course. Oh, you don't remember me, said the strange creature. She was covered in glittering rainbows and bowed deeply. What are you? Spark asked, transfixed at the beautiful animal. I'm a unicorn, of course, just like you. I'm not a unicorn, I'm a horse. And not a very good horse, apparently. I'm nothing like you. Take a look at yourself. Look in the pond, urged Tabitha. Go on. He was still rather reluctant, and so Tabitha had to give him a tentative poke in the right direction. Hesitantly, Spark edged towards the pond and peered cautiously in. To his amazement, the bump on his head seemed to have grown into a fine, shining horn and the sparkly mane was now glittering rainbows, shimmering in light. Ta-da! Gosh, I am like you. So I wasn't a horse at all, he said in amazement. So why did I end up in a herd of horrible horses? Oh, look, we can discuss that later, okay? Come on, I'll show you just how powerful you are. As Spark trotted deeper into the forest, he encountered creatures he had never seen before, glowing butterflies, talking rabbits and wise old owls. These magical beings welcomed him warmly and seemed to recognize something special in him. All unicorns have a special unique power. We don't know what yours might be yet, but my special power is to grant wishes. What would you wish for, if you could wish for anything? I always just wanted to feel like I belonged, said Spark, a little sadly. He barely noticed the soft breeze that carried a magical charm. Tabitha giggled. Of all the wishes he could have asked for, that was easy. Tabitha led Spark to a hidden glade where other magical creatures gathered. They taught him about the ancient ways of unicorns, their connection to nature, and their role as protectors of the balance between the natural and magical worlds and how they must always be pure of heart and do only good. Spark practiced his abilities and learned to harness his powers. One night, as Spark lay under the stars, he felt a deep transformation within him. His horn glowed softly and his entire body shimmered with a radiant light. Just as Spark was reveling in his newfound identity, a dark cloud loomed over the forest casting a shadow of fear among its inhabitants. The creature spoke of an ancient evil force that had awakened, threatening to destroy the valley and everything in it. Trouble was brewing. Dark forces threatened the peaceful herd, led by the evil enchanter Escobar. Spark was woken up to hear the rumbling of hooves. It was the horses they were fleeing the valley to escape the dark forces, led by none other than Grizzlehoof. 
He was startled to see Spark and Tabitha in all their magical, glittering, glowing glory, and at least had the decency to look a bit sheepish, and definitely wasn't going to forget his manners now. Please, Spark, you've got to help us. Magic is the only thing that can save us now. Oh, I see. I'm magic now. I thought I was manky. Just a joke, old friend. Just a joke. Grizzlehoof urged. Now you want my powers, after all the mean things you said. We're so sorry. We'll never be horrible again. Ever. If only you can save us. Spark wasn't sure he wanted to help Grizzlehoof. But then Tabitha nuzzled his mane and whispered in his ear. Remember, it's unicorn lore to be pure of heart and good in all actions. You must help. Really? Whispered Spark. Yes, really. Like... Really, really? Yes, really, really, really? Look here, interrupted Grizzlehoof. I don't mean to be rude, but we are kind of in a bit of an hurry around here, what with the whole evil enchanter about to destroy the forest and all that. All right, declared Spark. Let's go. There was no time to lose. Escaban had rallied a thousand dark warriors who flew down over the forest. The air grew cold and blackness descended. But Spark and Tabitha were ready. Spark gathered his courage and set out to confront the darkness. As he approached the heart of the forest, he encountered the source of the evil, a monstrous shadow creature exuding malevolence and despair. Spark summoned all his strength and focused his magical powers. His horn glowed brighter than ever, casting a brilliant light that pierced through the darkness. It lit up the sky in a blaze. The shadow creature howled in agony, unable to withstand the pure radiant energy of the unicorn. It's your unique power. You can cast light in the darkness, shouted Tabitha in delight. Spark laughed in exhilaration and doubled his efforts to shine the light so bright that Escaban was practically transparent, as if he was fading away. Quick, Tabitha, get the hordes. I'll hold Escaban. Tabitha cast a rainbow beam high into the sky, causing a million sparks to fall down on the horde, making them sizzle and scream, and with a final blinding flash, Spark banished the dark force, restoring peace to the forest and the valley beyond. Exhausted but victorious, Spark returned to the valley, where the herd awaited anxiously. Spark stood before them, his horn gleaming in the sunlight. I am Spark. And I am a unicorn, he declared, his voice strong and confident. I may be different, but my differences make me who I am. And your differences are what saved our herd. We are truly grateful, said Grizzlehoof humbly. The herd, moved by Spark's bravery and transformation, embraced him with newfound respect and admiration. They apologised for their teasing and thanked him for saving their home. From that day on, Spark became a protector of the valley, using his powers to nurture the land and its inhabitants. He bridged the gap between the natural and magical worlds, reminding everyone that it is our unique abilities and qualities that make us special. And he got his wish, didn't he? He knew he had not just one place to belong to, but two. With the herd or with Tabitha in their magical realm. The valley flourished under Spark's watchful care, and the legend of the unique unicorns spread far and wide. Well, the nearly unique unicorn, after all, we can't forget Tabitha, can we? After all, she says she knows the story about how Spark ended up in the herd of hordes of horrible horses, but you'll have to visit Fantasyland and ask her for yourself. Thank you to Indigo for your amazing suggestion, The Horse's Reflection. It painted such a perfect picture for us. Also, big thanks to Ruby for coming up with the character, Tabitha the Unicorn. I, it's quite a magical name, Tabitha, so I think it fits in perfectly. Thank you so much. If you have a character you'd love to see in one of our stories, make sure you suggest it using the StoryQuest character creator at funkidslive.com. Got an idea for a story? Tell us the title at funkidslive.com forward slash story quest and we could bring your story to life. For a new story each week, make sure you hit subscribe or follow so you don't miss a single episode.